Okay, hi. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to talk about curl. I was going to talk about like kind of a, an agenda what I was going to talk about, but let's let's say that I'll talk about curl, what it is, how I, how how we run this project a little bit. I I'm uh, Daniel Stenberg. I uh, used to work here for two years, did lin Linux stuff, but these days I do basically networking, networking mostly in Firefox and uh, uh, curl and uh, I participate in the IETF quite a lot too, especially with uh, HTTP and HTTP2 and so, stuff like that. I also do kind of a, I think I do like around 20 different open source projects, <coughs> mostly around networking. Ask me if there's anything that's kind of not clear. Maybe not ev uh, everything isn't clear. <coughs> just interrupt. It, it's, I think this is going to be a better talk and a better discussion if you just interrupt me and ask a question whenever you have one. <coughs> so let me just then preface, preface everything here that says and say that curl, maybe not everyone knows what curl is, but it, it is primarily a command line tool and it has an associated library, libcurl. Basically, it, it, they do internet protocol transfers, networking, data from one, as a client side um, data transfers. <coughs> so. It started at one point in time, actually. <coughs> so it started as nothing. You know, that's how projects start. You know, there were, of course, a lot, a lot of building blocks in the world, and you all know this, how, how you do software stuff. And, and uh, it, it's kind of interesting, I think, that it, it, at the same year this movie was made, 1996, I started on my project, which actually was a project that I kind of in her, I found on, online, I was going to make a little tool that just downloaded HTTP. So I created HTTP GET uh, uh, late 1996, <coughs> the Independence Day. No, but, but uh, then uh, I, I was making an IRC bot at the time and I wanted to do real-time currency translations and I found a site online that um, published currency rates, so really fancy uh, exchange rate, blah, blah, blah. So I did fetched HTTP every day. <coughs> but then I found another currency site that we was using Gopher. Of course, I need Gopher support too. <laughs> so I added Gopher support too. But then kind of it turned weird to have a tool named HTTP GET when it could actually speak multiple protocols. So I renamed that tool to URL GET. Much better. It speaks twi <laughs> two, two protocols. And then I, I don't remember exactly why, but I added FTP support too and, and then I added support for FTP upload, and suddenly the get part of the name was also confusing, so I renamed it again. So in, in 1998, I created curl the first time. <coughs> oh, that was fun. We had a tool that could transfer stuff. So we started then, and today we do a lot more. We do like 21 different protocols, and we do all sorts of different weird stuff with protocols up and down. and whatever you want to do with these protocols, we can almost, almost uh, always do them. <coughs> so, you don't have to read this, just a little blurb. So, we have, I, I would say that we today have roughly one billion users, perhaps, that are using curl and libcurl. I don't know, who knows? I mean, this is open source stuff, I don't know how, how, how do we even count users today? But counting boxes, services, companies that use curl stuff, I would say that it might be a billion, or two, or a half. I don't know. <coughs> a lot of users. And, and who, who, are, who are these users who are, who are making stuff with curl then? These are some of them. These are like 220 companies that are all using curl based. They're all doing products or services using curl in commercial uh, surroundings. I would say most of them do products. Some of them are services. Some of them are, well, you can tell, some of them are in bones, perhaps more known brands, but it's just a bazillion of different names. Some of them are well known, many of them. <coughs> so what do they use curl for? They use curl basically in everything. So it is a standard tool in Mac OS. Uh, so you can, every single Mac OS installation has curl and uh, basically every high-end TV today even low-end TVs, because they basically have the same software. So and iPhones and iPads, they have curl. 
does a lot of devices. And now most phones have it too. Not, it, it's not a mandatory part of Android. So in Android phones, it's not really in every Android phone. It is, it is present in all Samsung Android phones. <coughs> it's pretty much in all Linuxes and, and a lot of popular in games and a lot of different other things. So it's basically everywhere. It's in Facebook and Yahoo, quite a lot of users. <coughs> and it's basically most likely also present in your next device. And it's actually, actually, there's not a lot of portable or devices at all that, that don't have curl today. <coughs> kind of fun. So why do these guys use curl? They use it because <coughs> basically doing all these internet protocol stuff, that's fairly easy sometimes. You, you, you can all at least kind of get misled to believe that it is easy when you're reading the protocol standards, you read a spec and everything, and then you try it out online and you realize that the internet is not really matching the protocols, I mean, the spec wise. <coughs> We've been doing this for a while, so we kind of, after a lot of years, we can kind of align with how reality actually works. <laughs> it is open source, MIT licensed, as liberal as it gets, do whatever you want, as long as you don't claim you own it, basically, whatever. And the, it doesn't mean that and nobody has to provide anything back if they don't want to. I mean, they can change it how much they want to and, and do whatever they want. They don't have to send any code back. <coughs> in, our, in our situation, I think that has only helped us because it's, it removes all the barriers. There's no, I mean, companies, they don't see any problems with uh, adopting this into their own code or projects or whatever. They're not scared of this. They know they can do whatever. But if they want to keep up with the development, they, they don't want to have too much of their own local changes to keep up with development. <coughs> so we have simple, fairly simple, I would say, stable API at least. We have the same API today as we have had for, I think, nine years without breaking the API. <coughs> Uh, I think we had a k pretty good timing that we started this project. Uh, I mean, I started in 96, but it became a library around 2000, I believe, which, which was a bit kind of early enough to actually find a lot of users. So th there wasn't that many good networking on HTTP libraries around to, to s choose from. We're doing it in plain C, of course, because as you know, plain C is the most portable language there is. So we basically have curl and libcurl on whatever operating system you can think of, except the one you think of, because we require a fairly good amount of POSIX compliance to actually run it. <coughs> uh, yeah. We support 11 different TLS backends. That's kind of a fine detail that causes us a lot of pain. <coughs> Basically, it, um, we have a lot of different you can build libcurl and you can craft it pretty much for your own um, needs. So you can, that, that is uh, what all these device manufacturers like. They can build it for their own purpose, S remove the stuff they, didn't want, they don't want, and they can use the TLS library they like and uh, whatever, and support the protocols they, they really need in their device. One doubt, if it was like GPL2 instead of MIT, if it had been GPL instead of MIT. Uh, I, I, um, I started out in my early days with GPL and it hit me really hard. I, I mean, it didn't hit me and nobody hurt me, but uh, I, I got a lot of questions from companies who, who don't like GPL. They basically said that, oh, I wish you'd use another license because then we could have used it. So I, I actually started GPL back in the days and then actually switched to MPL, which I thought was more like halfway, a little copy left license uh, thing. And, uh, but then it kind of turned the other way around that MPL is not GPL compliant. So, so GPL programs couldn't use it. So then I switched again to MIT. So yeah, I'm, uh, I mean, another license could of course have worked, but I don't think MIT, the MIT license has hurt us at all. So I, I don't think we have kind of, it hasn't been any problem. <coughs> So, this all then taken together. Mm, there. 
it has led to some kind of fun uh, successes. So I kind of selected some fun photographs. And th that's, that's a billboard in Silicon Valley for DICE, their uh, online, their what the job come site with a curl command line that makes no sense at all, but it's fun because it's curl on the billboard in Silicon Valley. And th this is the NASDAQ building in New York with a fine curl command line on the fairly big screen. And that's the um, iPhone legal notice screen. <coughs> I, I think when it comes to open source in general, it's an, an interesting question is what, what is success? I mean, what is, what does it matter that there's a lot of users or not and who is using it? Because I mean, I, I do this for my own pleasure. It doesn't really matter if they use it or not. I, d I don't get any more money. I don't get any more happiness beca because some company put it on Aztec. I get a more bigger ego boost. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm here. But, uh, but, it, but it doesn't, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I have this photo that was really fun. <laughs> but, but that's about it. I think that company, however, they, <laughs> they might have got something from it. <clears throat> anyway, so how we do all of this? How did we get here? The, the tiny little curl project is actually, um, well, we do this curl command line tool and there's a library. A command line tool is really easy to make. It's really kind of um, closed and, and fine. It's really e in the, the easy part. Doing a library is much harder, as I figure a lot of you already know. <coughs> we transfer data, I already said this. We have two stable products. We, that means we don't really change stuff to backwards incompatible. So we fight really hard to keep old behavior and just add new stuff. We do, um, yeah, we have a, we're really happy about our, about our stable API then, so that has basically remained th so that applications have been able to stay the same for, for many years and, and yet being able to up, just upgrade over the years. <coughs> we were available uh, um, on a lot of platforms, including AS400 and, and Amiga and uh, a lot of artists and whatever you can think of. And of course, all the big ones too, but <coughs> <coughs> MIT license, right? I said that. So we're, we're of course, I'm not alone. This is not m my project. I haven't done everything of this. Look, we're many. No, but uh, <coughs> um, I started this out. I, I lead this project. I still do like 70 or 60% of, of all commits. So we're like 1,300 people that I have names on that are, have been contributors to the project. Contributors as in someone having helped us in some way. I mean, it's hard to judge if, uh, if anyone's help is big or small, but I'm trying really hard to keep track of everyone who helps us, and I try to thank them and give them credit for, for helping us out. That's a massive amount of names. So we do about uh, 30 or 40 contributors per release, and we do releases every eight weeks on the clock, every Wednesday, Wednesday every eight weeks, 40, 50, 30 new names. <coughs> and they're really increasing, and they're increasing linearly, which then says by itself that they don't come back, mostly, kind of increasing. They're just there once, and mo most of them I never see again. So there's a lot of this drive-by patching I have this problem, I solved it, here's the patch, and then they run on with their lives and I st get stuck with this, no, no. But uh, I mean, there's m not that many people that are actually sticking around. <coughs> is that a problem for you? Um, yes, it is a problem. I wouldn't say that it is a, um, well, you can say that it's not, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. But, but, but the, the larger the number of, of uh, occasional contributors and the, and the very few, number of core contributors, it makes it, the load on the few it gets very high sometimes because all of these occasional contributors, they don't really care about the architecture or, or long-term goals or whatever. They want to fix their problem now. They want to paint over the bad stuff, put the good stuff on it. But maybe it doesn't go with the, I mean, the paradigm or the policy or whatever, or what we're thinking in the long term. So yeah, the, of course, it, a good project to, to survive really good in the long term, it would be good to be quite a number of people in the kind of in the core team that are, have actually been around for 
five, ten years. But we're, I think we're about five or seven that have been around for at least seven years. <coughs> uh, one question uh, is, uh, is it mainly driven by uh, people uh, doing patches and you see uh, new standards that you want to support? Or is it also uh, companies making requests for additional <coughs> support? I, I, can you repeat the uh, if there's the mo mostly is it mostly you that uh, you want to support a new standard and incorporate this or do you get patches from it? I I would say that it both. I, I get a lot of um, I get a lot lot of patches from people and that could be just fixing patches and it could be fixing protocols and adding new stuff. So I would say that there's a lot of of everything. Patches mostly come from people that actually found a problem with their own product, usually. When we did this, something broke. We, here's the fix. It, now it doesn't break for us anymore. And then I say, well, it, now it broke for 22 other guys instead. So, <coughs> But of course, it's, it's, uh, sometimes, you, you know, since all these companies, they make products, and sometimes some of those, of course, figure out that they, they want to use some new feature in some protocol that we don't support before. or they want to do whatever that we didn't do before, so they, they implement it and send us the patch. Of course, that, ha that happens regularly. I would say that, in general, new features are made by someone that has been around for a while. We're all volunteers, right. How much is patches and how much is doing something else than patches? Um, that is a good question. I w um, yeah, I, I can. I have another slide about that, but I could. I could tell you that r roughly. I spend about two hours a day on this, every day, all days, and that's that's roughly what it takes me to handle patches, mail, support, and everything. That's, that usually give me, uh, gives me only a tiny piece of that to actually develop anything on. So I would say that it takes ordinary days, I don't get time in, enough to actually develop stuff. Or I do uh, sometimes, but, but not a lot. So it takes quite a lot of time, I would say. I have one stable branch, yes. How do you handle new features? I mean, the, um, how do you handle backward compatibilities? If you fix all, fix the patches, bugs, and new features in the same. Yeah. Um, uh, well, first, since we're such a small project, we're, we're a small project in in all terms. Since it's actually not a lot of code either. So there's like 150k lines of code. So it's not really a massive amount. So we're small in that regard too, and we have. I think we have about 200 commits a month or so. So it's, it's not a lot. So that, that's also, so when we do, if we're speaking in specifically branches and stuff, we do everything in the main branch, really. And then we, and we so we have a one month of adding stuff, features and everything, and then we have one month of fixing bugs on the master branch, and then we do releases. So if we wanna, and, but then, we're, we're just the project. We're, we're doing curl and the libcurl. But then when we do releases, there are like, what, 200 different Linux gestures, and there's an Apple operating system, and there are 22 other operating systems. They get our stuff and put into their Linux dis distributions. And what do they do? They don't offer just one version. Most of them offer like five versions or three versions. They have different trees. All of them have different trees. They have different policies. They have different concepts. That's, that, that's, that's too complex. We're, I don't get into that. So if you're, if you're using a Linux distro today, you're using Fedora or Debian or Ubuntu or whatever, they all have different trees. They all have different versions of curl and they're the different trees. And they all have different policies on when they upgrade and, and sometimes we, re we release security patches for our um, stuff, or rather we do that rather often. But, but uh, then we just release, this is the patch for this version. Fine. 
and then the, all the other ones, uh, all the distros, they have to kind of suffer and do the backporting for the different mm -hmm. versions. So it is, it is not wise to, to maintenance the version like you do, 7, 35. If, well, if it's wise or not, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're trying really hard to make every release better than the previous release. So in my mind, the latest release is always the best release. Yeah. So in my mind, using an older release is always worse than using a more recent release. But, and, I, know, I mean, everyone has their own use case. I can't really tell exactly. Right, we, st we stay backwards compatible. So yeah, you, you can kind of build your own applications with the old or the new, you can go back and forth, unless you're using a newer feature, of course, that we add every time. I wanted to say that we're all volunteers. We're not kind of, we're not, well, with a little caveat, we're not backed by companies. We're actually just all providing stuff when we want to. Or rather, that's kind of the view I have because I don't know what the other guys do or don't because I don't handle anyone's time or anything. People contribute stuff. But of course, a lot of the contributors are actually working for someone who pays their, uh, I mean, their time and so on. And I do uh, regularly uh, work part-time on this, paid by my employer. <coughs> well, mostly volunteers. And this is kind of new for me to actually get paid for this since I, I've done the first 16 years without getting paid for it. Uh, <laughs> question, uh, uh, how fast is it? Uh, lots of standards and uh, lots of variants of standards. Is that you have a, some kind of version version or you? Yeah, we have a, we have a rather. Uh, um, we have quite a lot of tests actually, and um, but uh, but the, the 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 hard part with testing then is not a lot of tests, is that we support so many different platforms and so different build combinations. And as I said, 11 different TLS backends we can build with or without, uh, I don't know. So you can actually build curl in like thousands of different combinations. So that's the really the tricky part. So making sure that we actually test all different combinations. So yeah, I, I do as good as I can. There's more to do, but we have thousands of test cases that run on, on um, Voluntary mach volunteers machines every day non-stop so you have fairly good test coverage ah, so the, the testing is spread out to the volunteers yeah I have like I, I think we have like 20 or 30 people who, who run the kind of the test machines uh, in their own machines and it's just basically a script that gets everything update from git run all the tests send back the result and that's basically the only way I can cover so many machines so so i can i think we cover 20 different operating systems and, and uh, i don't know all, all the popular cpu architectures at least that way do you think we should test use this test when we upgrade the, uh, our releases would it be good well i mean we only release stuff we tested and it works so of course if you use if you anyone would use our releases we're pretty sure that it worked the way we thought it would work so I was thinking if we just backwards uh, patch and not upgrade. Uh yeah, if you would if you would get curl code and patch it, you could run the tests to see that it still works the same way we thought it would. And of course, we're uh, we're open source. Everything is public. We do a, we don't have any private ways to communicate. We don't have any private code. We don't have anything privately. I mean, I do most of my stuff alone at home. I don't have any other ways to communicate than in the public, of course. <coughs> and uh, we're on GitHub, uh, so we do everything kind of the Git style, and we have pull requests and issue tracker and everything on. I actually just recently kind of switched my mindset to do it the way the kids do, you know, the pull request on GitHub. Maybe you don't know, but you should know, because that's the way the kids do it. <laughs> It's a bit of a learning curve, I would say. That is not always the most smooth way, but it's for those who are already on GitHub, which is like a couple of million users, it's, it is the easiest way for them to contribute anything. So just saying that it's fine, send us your pull request on GitHub, suddenly you kind of, kind of open the floodgates, and now we get even more contributions for people who are al already on GitHub, because on GitHub is where kind of the new way of doing open source. <coughs> 
and we have a couple of persons who actually have push rights to the repository so I don't have to do all the pushes myself we're actually five or seven people who, who are allowed to push to the to the repository <coughs> um, yeah and we do uh, a lot of mails of course everything is public we do everything the old style mailing list uh, approach many mails and I like this guy so I had to put him in a slide here <coughs> so but okay about his, his representing security then I, I, I get this question Heartbleed is a really good name since kind of it symbolizes everything that could happen if you use a project that is used in a lot of places and suddenly you find a really terrible security flaw but uh, ironically then it, it was probably the best thing that ever happened to OpenSSL that they found the Heartbleed I mean they're now drowning in money so maybe I should have one but um, <laughs> but of course uh, I think it goes back to, to what um, what we talked about about testing and verifying that everything we do is is okay and we can never be sure that we don't ever have a security problem like Heartbleed so all these companies what would what, what are they making sure that what that we don't have any I mean serious security issues somewhere well they don't and and of course the more we use it the more the more we can know that it would pr it was probably okay but Heartbleed proved it to us that a lot of users can use something for a long time without finding it out so we of course we don't know and nobody knows either I, I do my very best to making sure that that we don't have any heart bleeds I mean static code analyzers and, and what not to to find out problems but th that's of course an, an a job that never ends <coughs> and and then the fun part of course um, this isn't really uh, related to open source in any way or curl isn't specific in any way well, users um, uh, some of those big companies that are using curl they of course they contact me uh, privately and ask about uh, all those lawyer legal things about patents and rights and who owns this and blah 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 and of course I don't I, I, I'm, I'm being honest and saying that it's open source everything is there you use it if you want to but then we have this patent stuff that we're kind of fortunate to not be affected by so much in Sweden so I don't know I, I, I do know that there are a couple of uh, especially American companies that have been sued for technologies used in curl so maybe there are some issues but it's not really curl related because you couldn't do it any other way we're just using stuff basically the, the documented the protocol internet way but of course someone has patented something we're claiming they have I, I know that one of one particular case for I think four or five years ago it was a they there's an um, there's a company and they're always filing these suits in the same state in eastern Texas uh, there, there, there's a company that ha have a patent on resuming download so you're basically not allowed to check how, how much have you already transferred and then ask for the rest of it curl can do that patent violation but every sensible person on the globe would say that's kind of a <laughs> how else would you do it <laughs> So no, we won't help them with that. And of course, are contributors uh, risking getting sued? Uh, or, I mean, is there any risk or anything involved in contributing anything? And of course, I don't know about that either. Looking back at things, of course, it, ha it has never happened. I don't think there's a particular good, uh, a p particular good risk for anyone. And especially since open source in general is kind of growing and becoming de facto for everything, I think. Security-wise, we're pretty safe. What is the MIT license? The MIT license doesn't say a lot. It says very little. <laughs> it basically says that there's n nothing guaranteed. Use it on your own risk, and there's no warranty, n neither express or implied. Blah blah blah. Copyright by. So speaking then about copyright license and stuff. I figured I'd bring you this boring subject and a cat. No. <laughs> so I own most copyrights because I actually wrote most of the stuff originally. So most of the things are uh, under my copyright, which is kind of handy. I don't expressly 
forbid anyone from adding their own copyright since I say that we, we still keep this license. It doesn't really matter whose copyright it is. <coughs> if you do a lot of, if you add a lot of stuff, yeah, I, I say, yeah, sure, go ahead, add your own copyright. Some, some people have contributed new protocol support and stuff. They want to add their own copyright, so I, it doesn't matter. We kind of assume that anyone who contributes code have the right to do so, which is a kind of a, um, how, how do you know? I, I don't know that. I've just stated it publicly in several places that, yeah, don't send us code if, we're, if, you don't, if you're not allowed to. Do you have bylaws and contribution rules and <laughs> saying that you should, blah, 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 before contributing, you should be sure that this is... Yes, yeah, so I basically have, these are, these are the rules for contributing. And one of the rules is that you're, you're, you must have the permission to provide the code. So it's kind of expressed that way, which, of course, that's the only way I, I, I know, which then means I don't know. I'm just assuming. And it works, really. I don't think anyone ever has suffered any consequences for contributing. And in general, they're contributing from some company anyway. <laughs> yeah, we don't have any trademarks. And there's a trademark for curl. I don't know really how they handle that. They're, Curl is a, is a uh, programming language, curl.com. They filed a trademark um, actually after I think I started my project. They contacted me early on about the name collision, but they never responded to my email. I don't know. <coughs> okay. Of course, this takes a lot of time. Who pays? We're all spare time hackers. So, or, or from my point of view, we're spare time. I don't know. Some, some people are, of course, paid to do stuff. Some are not. And, and I think it's also like in my case, I get paid for some. I, most of the stuff I don't get paid for. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I get code. If it's, code, if it's good, I merge it. If it's bad, I tell them it's bad. <coughs> there's some kind of, uh, there's some amount of company sponsored features, especially features. Companies don't tend to come around and ask for bug fixes. The when the company, they use curl or whatever, and they're happy with it, they just want this little extra thing. Then they kind of learn that it helps them to get to some of the project court people to ask <coughs> for features. So I've done this actually many times. With comp the company contacts me and say, hey, can you do this for us? And of course, um, that kind of opens the door for doing all sorts of bad stuff for money. But I, so far, I've, I think I managed pretty good to just say no to stupid things and just said OK to good things. So some of the protocols, some of the features we've added over the years have been paid for by companies that then paid for my time to do it. And then usually it isn't visible to anyone on the outside that anyone paid me for it. Sorry, is that a problem for? Yeah, for my employer. If I would do it without my employer's yeah. knowledge, then it would be a problem. Yeah, but I've never done it without consent from my employer. I've usually been my own employer while, while doing that. And I'm uh, doing it right now with my employer's consent. <coughs> right, that was kind of what I said. So I just wanted to mention then what all this means for me, like kind of a, uh, we kind of addressed that uh, a little bit, as I mentioned it before. This is kind of my primary hobby. This is what I like to do. So I, I spend two hours on this every day, basically, since about 98 or so. I don't know, I don't count. <coughs> I've been paid part-time. So I spend, um, I don't count now either, so I don't know how much time I spend on it on work time or, or either. <coughs> it doesn't matter. But it kind of equals out to, to a, lot of, a lot of hours and a lot of commits and a lot of emails over the years. But, I mean, of course, it's, it's many years. So, of course, it, it becomes a lot of stuff. I was going to ask you what motivates you to work two hours a day on this without getting paid, but you already said it. What, why are they paying me for doing this when I was already doing it? <laughs> that's a good. That's a good question. But he, you started to work at Mozilla, right? Or after? 
Well, I started to work for Mozilla, but part of my, my work contract with Mozilla is that they pay me for, or I am allowed to spend a certain amount of my work hours on curl. But that's, that's kind of a, uh, that's because Mozilla is a foundation and in it they have a, you know, guidelines what their purpose is. And the purpose is to improve internet and for internet for users. And fr from a Mozilla point of view, that kind of matches what I'm doing with Curl. So they think it's kind of, it's good for internet and everything, that kind of a altruistic motive. And I'm fine with that. So they said, would you like to do that? And I said, yeah, cool. Yeah, well, then go ahead. So yeah, I would have done it. I would have continued the way I did it before uh, anyway. So it, it, it didn't really, I mean, it gave me more time. And of course, I appreciate that. So why do I do it? <coughs> I kind of like doing it. It's, I mean, as you saw, those uh, billboards and, and the NASDAQ building, it, it's a really good ego boast. And, and especially having, having reached a certain level of, of users and everything, it kind of feels good. And, and, and then it feels bad when I find some, something, something wrong with it and bugs and everything. And I figure out new features that people want. And, and I like doing it. And I like internet stuff. And, and yeah, it's just fun. I enjoy it. It's just fun stuff. So I keep on doing it. It's not harder than that, actually. So, future. I, I get this question. Sorry. Sorry, if I <laughs> if I decide that it gets boring, yeah, uh, and I figure that is kind of a. I mean, that might happen at some point in time. Then I just give up and and uh, go home. I mean, the code is all there, and I think that is kind of a an interesting effect with it being all open source. Everything is there. There's no hidden things anywhere. So anyone is free to, to take on where I leave it, if I leave it. Like, like most open source, I can just go ahead, do whatever you want. But aren't you also like contributing to your own brand? Yes, I do. Yeah, but that's why I'm here, right? Yeah. So, so of course I'm contributing to my own brand. But, but that's like saying, yeah, you do that when you're, you're playing golf too. Or whatever. So of course, I mean, whatever you do in life, you contribute to your own brand. Yeah, but uh, I mean, you make a living on on doing similar stuff, and you might not have the job you have today. Uh, no, no, I'm I'm convinced that this this has absolutely helped me put me on where I am today. Of course, yeah. Do you have a final goal for? A final goal? Yeah. No, I do not. Do you find some uh, competition from WGET? <laughs> yes, I do. I, I kind of like this kind of... The, the WGET is a command line tool that is quite similar to curl, at least in some aspects. And um, I get a lot of questions about why, why use curl when I can use WGET. And WGET is slightly older. It's kind of more established. At least it was more established than curl, at least, uh, at least in... Um, curl distributions and so on, so on. So as a command line tool, I would say that wget is slightly more kind of known, popular, and used than curl. So I get a lot of questions about comparisons, wget or curl. Like, like I, I, my, one of my favorite comparisons is that wget is easier because you can type it all with the left hand on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> and with curl, you kind of is no. no. <laughs> But, but I, I, and I also kind of, <laughs> I kind of encourage this competition because I think it's fun. And I, I, I also actually participate in the WGET project, so, and I like the maintainers there too, so it's fun. Fun to poke, poke on them. Why use her instead of WGET? Uh, well, I don't, if, if, don't, I mean, why, why switch? If you're happy with one, don't switch. But, but, uh, I mean, you would use one or the other because you would use the correct tool for the job. If both are fine, then use the one you prefer. I, I, don't, I don't mind. I don't care. They're really different in a lot of ways, but ha they have a small overlap. And that overlap is what people tend to focus on. And, and I would say that sometimes in that overlap, WGET is the correct answer. 
So if you, if you have a URI, or URL, URI, whatever you call it, and you want to download that file to a local file, then WGET does a lot of things that might make sense for you, that might actually make it a better tool to just download that URL to a file. Maybe. But there are details. So about my final goal, protocols are actually keeping to evolve. I mean, I would say that internet protocols and transfers in general are not settling down. It's actually going faster. So everything is changing all the time. I don't think, I mean, I mentioned a lot of protocols over there, and some of them, of course, are dead, like Gopher or, or other weird protocols that aren't going to go anywhere. But I mean, even IMAP or SMTP or, or these weird established protocols, they, are, they have stuff going on. Um, there's a lot of different new authentications for all these protocols. HTTP2 is, is uh, just rolling out. There's no end to changing protocols and adding protocols and improving protocols. And there's just not going to be a stop to that. So it's not going to be one day that, ooh, we're feature complete. Nothing more is going to happen. So we're going to just keep on growing and evolving with the, with the surrounding and the reality. And as I mentioned before, open source survives. It doesn't matter if I would quit or get run over by a bus tomorrow. It doesn't really matter because the code is already there. Everything I did actually uh, this morning, I already committed and pushed to GitHub. Everything is out there, even if I don't do it. <coughs> so there's really no slowdown in sight. I mean, technically, there might be slowdowns because someone get bored or get run over, but. <coughs> The internet and protocols and internet transfers are hardly slowing down, and, and all these other users, you know, all those companies and products and everything, they're hardly slowing down. They're all going faster and faster, so why wouldn't everything go faster? So it's going to be more. So you can participate. It's fun. Just have to spend some time on it. That's it. Yeah, isn't it done already? Yeah. When is it done? My wife <coughs> likes to ask me that. When is it done? <laughs> yeah, but, but is software ever done in any way, anywhere? Come up with new features. Eight weeks is a very short time. Yes. So how? Yeah, but in, in general, it, it, there are new features because we have these eight weeks. So. You basically add one feature every new release. So if you want to do something, you do it with this release, and then you add the next feature, the next release. We don't, so don't, we don't usually then add a lot of releases to one, uh, no, sorry, a lot of new features for one release. It would kind of get spread out over time. And we get new f features because we get contributions by others who figure out things to do. And um, I don't know, it tends to be all sorts of very, uh, I can't really see a pattern of the new features, but there, it, it doesn't, it, it never ends. But you think when you've worked a long time that it will get longer and longer periods between the new features? Yeah, but I, I think that's, I think it's the other way around. Okay. I think new features are getting faster and faster, and, and we're actually, we're, we're doing more bug fixes and more features now over time than we did in the past. So it's actually, I think, slowly ramping up. It's, 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 I, I would say that it reflects our kind of industry and the internet in general, rather than uh, that it happens to be a project that's been going on for a while. I think the last two releases were like one week ago. Yeah, right, yeah. <coughs> last two releases, yeah, because I screwed up, so I had to do a patch release. All about that, all, all the good testing. Yeah, yeah, sometimes all that good testing isn't uh, that good testing. So what's your uh, mission? Is, is it world domination or uh, something else? Right, two billion users. Uh, no, no I don't, I don't, having fun doing it. And the more I do it, the more fun I have with it. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good with, with it as it is. And of course, I, I, I want to make it better. I want to make it work. I'm, I want to fix the bugs. I want to add, the, and I have a bunch of features I want to add. I don't look ahead very far. 
I have this uh, roadmap that I want to work on next, and that's what I'm working on. And I'm getting a constant feed of bugs that people say that it doesn't work like it should be, and then I have to fix those bugs, and then get back to fixing my new features. And by the time I finally added a couple of features, I have 22 new bugs to work on. And then I go round and round like that. And actually, um, I added, I have this roadmap on, on like five, four uh, big features I want to add. Uh, and then you could ask, how can you add features? Like, uh, there's new things, you know, how to handle certificates or how to handle DNS or, or how to do HTTP2 or, or how to do TLS to proxies or whatever. So, and I had had this uh, roadmap for actually for several months and I was contacted by uh, a, a company just a month ago who said, what can we do to make you work faster on your roadmap? <laughs> so that's why I'm right now working full time on curl actually. So now I work faster on my roadmap. So it turned out to be good to not be too fast either. Okay, so I have a question. Uh, you said that the actual implementation of the protocols may not actually comply to the specified standard. Yes. Uh, and uh, how do you deal with that? I mean, you just try out what works and then... Yeah, basically. Bas uh, um, you're right. Uh, how, how in general, I try to follow specs. But, but we, when, when, when uh, well, I tend to kind of implement stuff according to the spec, but then you realize that if I do that, it doesn't work with the reality. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I get to a point, uh, well, what do we do instead? Yeah. And then I tend to, when it comes to everything that is web, that is HTTP and HTTPS, I tend to compare with what the browsers do. Okay. And browsers, you know, uh, well, no, they don't, but in general, they do. And, and in general, they're completely spineless, you know, and just, fold over to the <laughs> easiest path and that, so yeah so i tend to do i tend to follow what the browsers do and when it's not browser related or or HTTP related i tend to do I tend to see what other tools that do the same thing what they do and then i kind of have to decide there's no there's no silver bullet to that i have to just decide on a case by case basis but it can be really hard and sometimes i then do the the weird thing and add an option to make you make the application select that yeah exactly but but nobody likes that because then i kind of i'll push the decision to the application instead and what should they do uh, that or that in some kind corner case protocol stuff and with this experience do you ever get involved in trying to have the protocols match reality uh, a lot I, I work in the ietf quite a lot actually well especially in HTTP stuff but i've also been involved with cookies and web sockets and, and a lot of other and, and FTP also quite some, but that's a slow job and it's uh, a lot of different uh, opinions and <laughs> so uh, it, that's not always kind of the right way either. Well, I no, I, I appreciate it. I like that. I, I, I participated a lot in the HTTP two work and it was a lot of fun. Just out of curiosity. Does your brother contribute to this project also? Uh, well, he, he does, or he did. Yeah, so he's a one of those 1,300 names. And does your sister-in-law also ask you when you did the project? <laughs> 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 no, I, no, I don't think so, because I don't, I don't, Bjorn, as my brother, I, I, he, he's more like these occasional contributors, so he, he figures out some, something to do and he contributes that. I don't think he spends that much time on Curl, so I don't think his wife... Uh, cares that much about this project. I think he has his own projects to waste time on. I, I wanted to thank you a lot for doing a very good job. Uh, you have very, every documentation is perfect. I use a lot. And I work with other packages a lot. I looked on it. But if uh, security vulnerability comes, I go to their website. They don't mention it, they don't have security advisory, they don't publish where the patch you can get it. It is a lot of work for me just figuring all this out. But when it is curl, I can go to your security advisory, I can read the CVs, I can read a lot of information, and also it says where the patch is located. Yeah, we spend a lot of time on that. And as I said, when I said I spend a lot of time on curl, that I mean a lot of time is of course not on code, then on, but on 
stuff like that, documentation or website or infrastructure or whatever. And I mean, documentation is really hard, as you all know. And, and, and the more documentation you add, the worse it gets for those who actually want to find that little piece of documentation that is in everything. So actually, I, um, I did this poll about, uh, among my users just a couple of weeks ago asking people about what they think about curl. And one of the questions is uh, grade the, er, or pick out the three best parts about the curl project and the three worst parts. And they were kind of the same things listed then. <laughs> and documentation kind of ranked high on both lists. <laughs> so actually, the <laughs> it is a double-edged sword, actually. How do you do? A lot of documentation is not necessarily good because it makes it really hard to find, too. So it's, it's really, I mean, you want a lot of good documentation, but you also want to make it sure, make sure that you can actually find what you're searching for. So it's really hard. It's hard to satisfy everyone, of course. I haven't been very looking at as a user, but as a <laughs> distro, which are interested in security patches, it is very easy to find information about. I could mention vulnerability and where to get the patch. My favorite write-in um, comment in the survey to my users, get rid of that retina burning blue on the web page. <laughs> that kind of, they don't like my web design skills. <laughs> I would say that that user's worst problem. I would say. <laughs> I'm done, if no, there's no other questions. <laughs>